Hey, what is up everyone? Welcome back to a brand new Roblox Studio video. My name is Floppy, and in today's tutorial video, we're going to be going over how to make overhead GUIs in Roblox Studio. Now, if you don't really know what overhead GUIs are, they're basically overhead name tags, I guess you could say. Special name tags that could either be associated to a specific role or typically to your Roblox username. So instead of having that small font, small little name tag above your head in the main Roblox game, in today's tutorial we're going to be showing how you can actually enlarge in that and make it in a specific GUI. We have three different ways on how you can actually make this happen. We have system one, which every player has an overhead tag inside of the Roblox game, which just displays their username, basically meaning there's no special tags. So even if you are the owner of the game, you're still going to have the basic simple chat tag or overhead tag above your player saying your Roblox username. But then with system two, how it is going to work is then we are going to be implementing the special tags. So only specific Roblox usernames are going to receive an overhead tag saying either their username or something like an admin, VIP, moderator, stuff like that. That is going to be mainly what it is focusing there on system two, where it's down to specific people. Now, only those specific people will receive that special overhead tag, but everyone else inside of the Roblox game will not have any tag and will just be left with a small little print of their Roblox username and they will not be given the main large overhead tag that was given in system one simply due to system two focusing on giving those specific players the special tags. So then in system three, basically what will be happening is you'll have the one side or the, the players that have got the specific tags, which is for example, VIP, owner, moderator, whatever. But then you can also implement it with system three that anyone else in the game, even though their name is not specifically put in the script, they're still going to receive a tag, basically meaning Everyone in the game is no matter what going to have a tag. When in system two, it's mainly focused just to those people who have a specific tag. And then system one is kind of just, you know, your base old, simple, everyone has the tag above their head and it is nothing special. So system three is really more advanced in a way. It's allowing you to have your special owner tag, special moderator tag, whatever, but then also giving every other single player inside of the game the ability to still have an overhead tags representing or displaying their Roblox username. So for starters, we obviously now want to actually go and create our tag. So the best way to create a tag is simply start off with a part. Now this part is going to be useless. It is just for the main building blocks of our actual tag here. So click on the plus button next to your part and we want to go and search up billboard GUI, just like that, and insert a billboard GUI inside of your part. So now you can see our UI is kind of floating there in the middle of our part. There's nothing really on it. Click on the plus button next to your billboard GUI and insert a text label. Now you will be able to see that there's a text label, but it's currently kind of inside of the part at the same time. So go to the billboard GUI and select always on top. So now, no matter where we are, the GUI is always going to be overlapping or should I say um, higher power compared to the part. So now that we've got our main billboard UI and also our text label, you now want to go and customize it. So simply, there's a couple things you can go and customize here. You can customize the transparency. You can really customize whatever you want with text. This is going to be the main tag that is going to be showing above the player's head. Now keep that in mind. So for this, I'm going to be going changing the background transparency to one because all we're going to be having is the text. We're not going to have any borders or any fashionable looking GUI that is going to be above the head. It is just going to be a simple name. So go and customize your text label however you would like. I'm just going to be having it just so that the text is showing and there to be no background. So I set the background, background transparency to one. Um, if you're wanting a obviously a background, it would be zero. So just go change it to whatever you'd like and go and customize your text label. So now we need to move on to the actual adjustment of the settings regarding the sizes and the positions of our billboard GUIs as well as our text labels, which is gonna be positioned on the player. So we wanna head over to our billboard GUI, and then we wanna go and change the max distance down here from infinite to 25. So what the max distance basically limits is actually how far a player can see your name a tag from. Because let's say we were here and we didn't want to see the tag, you'd go and maybe select, set that as one, because now you can see 
I need to be in range of one to be able to see the tag. Actually, that's a very bad demonstration. Let me put it at five. Now you can see I have to be at a range of five to be able to see the tag, else I'm not going to be able to see it. Basically meaning I've reached the max distance and it's no longer going to show me the, uh, the, the tag. So now, the reason why we're going to change it is simply because it is set to infinite. So if we kept on infinite, I could be all the way over here, yeah, on the other side of the planet, and I'd be able to see that player's username, which is not necessarily what a majority of people want. So you go and change that to the Mac distance to whatever you want. So you can see, a player is going to have to be that close to me to be able to see my username, which for demonstration purposes is not too bad. But let's say you're playing maybe more of an a first person shooter game or maybe an obby game or something you'd maybe have it a little further away or you may have it slightly closer it's really up to you once you've changed your max distance we want to head over here to size and we want to go and remove the 200 and make this a zero so zero zero just like that but then we want to go over to the first zero and change the first zero to five just like that and then we want to head over here to the other bracket right there and we want to go and remove the five to make it zero zero again but then go here and change that zero to a three basically now allowing it to size up like that but you may see okay it doesn't look right that is because we've still got a lot of things to adjust here so go and change the size to five comma zero bracket three comma zero bracket something just like that and that is how you're going to size it correctly so that it fits onto the player's head nicely. You then want to head over to where it says studs offset and we want to go and do 0, 1.5, 0. So it should look something like that. So 0, 1.5, 0. We then want to head over to our text label and then we want to do basically the exact same thing. Now as, I, as you guys remember you can change the background transparency here but then we're also going to be heading over to the size. So we want to go and remove the 200, make that 0, 0. And then we want to go over to the first number or the first digit and I'm going to go and put in the size of 1. And then I'm going to go to the second digit here, remove, or sorry, the 50, remove the 5 to make it 0, 0. Then go back to the first number here just after the bracket and I'm going to change this to 0, 0.6. So you can just add as 0.6 there. So now that we've got our uh, bracket or whatever that is a bracket comma zero bracket zero oh, sorry bracket bracket zero point six comma zero bracket so that is our size right there you want to go and adjust this exactly how i've set it because this is a good setting to have it just above the player's head and then you want to make sure your text scale is enabled so that the text is always scaled up to whatever your text label or your billboard gui size is so now that is our main text label actually done. So this is going to be the text that is going to be showing above the player's head when we actually go and join into the game. So now what we want to do, we want to head over here to our billboard GUI. Keep in mind, obviously yours will most likely look different depending if you went and adjusted it. Go over to your billboard GUI, go to the parent here in the properties, click on the part where it says part, and we want to go and remove move this over to server storage. So go and you want to click on the part and then you want to head over to server storage and now it has gone and moved our billboard GUI into server storage. Basically, it is holding our billboard GUI inside of the server, hence why it's called server storage. Now we no longer need this part here, so we can go and delete this, and then that is that. So now we actually got, want to go and make the main system that is going to give the player the tag or the overhead GUI if they are in the game. And we're going to be mainly starting off with system one. So we want to head over here where it says server script service, click on the plus button and insert a script. As I mentioned before, there's going to be three different systems. So all the systems are going to be located in server script service in the script. Now, please do keep in mind, you can only use one of these three systems, which ever one works best for you. So the reason why you can't have two of these systems inside of your game is simply because let's say you had system one where every single person has an overhead GUI with their Roblox username. Now let's say you also went and inserted system two where you are then giving players specific tags. What would happen, let's say my username was A, for example, and now I've got the special tag, an owner tag, for example. What would be happening is it would then go and clone the, the GUI or go and clone the tag and what it would do, it would overlap between system one and system two. So I would have my main username showing there at the top um, on system one, there being ITZ underscore floppy fish. But then because I've also got system two, the, the, then I'm gonna be receiving my specific tag or my special tag, which is gonna be saying owner. 
basically meaning that my the system one and system two are going to be overlapping which is going to leave a unprofessional not nice looking um, overhead GUI so first of all we're going to be starting off with system one which is just going to be giving every single person a overhead tag which is going to be displaying their username so we want to head down to the description of this video copy and paste the code that's in the description bring it back to Roblox Studio it's going to be called system one and it is going to be called something like standard script which does every single player and gives every single player an overhead GUI you want to go back to Roblox Studio, remove all the previous code, and then paste in the new code. So now that you've inserted the code, there isn't actually much we need to go and change. There's a couple things that you can customize depending on how you want your tags to be laid out. As you guys remember, our tags were already laid out, or sorry, should I say our overhead GUIs were already customized earlier on. But let's say now, let's say if you're wanting to change the color of your text, which we created it earlier, which is our text label. Let's say you wanted to change that in using script. You'd go over here to line seven where it says cloneGUI.textLabel.textColor equals color3.fromRGB and then a whole bunch of numbers. As you guys can see, it is currently on white. So if a player joins into the game, uh, they are then given that specific tag with their Roblox username with a white colored text. Now let's say you wanted it to be green. You'd then go and click on the little spinny wheel here and select green and click OK. Now you're able to see that it is green. So when a player, if we had to go and leave this now and join in, you'd be able to see that the player's text or the player's uh, username is colored green. So I'm gonna quickly go over the code on what exactly happens here. So we basically identify or what our billboard text GUI is. So it goes local billboard text GUI equals game.serverStorage wait for child billboard GUI. Now also something I should also mention here, if you went and changed the name of any of your parts here, billboard GUI or text label from their default name, you'd go and change that here. So let's say you went and changed your billboard GUI here to fish, you'd go and change this to fish, but I don't think many of you would. Only if you have, then you'll need to change that here. Basically, this goes to the game, goes to the server storage, and then it waits for the child. The billboard GUI is a child of the server storage, so it waits until it finds the billboard GUI, billboard GUI, and that basically identifies our billboard GUI, which is located in our server storage. Then it goes to the game.players.player added, connect, and it creates a function which then identifies the player. Then it goes player.character added, connect, it creates another function, and that um, kind of identifies our character. So then here on line five, it goes local clone GUI equals billboard text GUI clone. Now this is a, I guess you could say an event, basically cloning our billboard text GUI, but cloning this right here that is located in our server storage. So that is cloning our GUI. It then goes our clone GUI dot text label dot text equals player dot name. Remember our player we gained from when the player was added into the game, we then gain that there. So cloned GUI dot text label, our text label there, dot text, it is then setting it to that specific player's username. So that specific player username is whatever their main username actually is. So when they join in, it then goes and collects their username and then it displays it on the actual text label there. Then it goes clone GUI dot text label dot text color. That is where you are adjusting your colors if you're wanting to change what color the text is when the well, player or when the um, overhead GUI spawns in. Then it goes clone dot parent, and this basically is moving our clone GUI, which is our billboard text GUI, to the parent, changing the parent to the player's head. So then it goes to the character, the, the character of the player wait for child and then it waits for the head object inside of our character and then it basically sets the clone joy or well it sets the parent of the clone sorry it sets the parent of the clone's ui to the head so originally it was server storage but now we are moving the clone's ui to our player's head so now that we've gone over the code and you've changed it to your preference you want to head up here click on the x button next to your script so now that you've closed your script, before we go and test it out, we just want to go and change one last thing. We want to head over here to our starter player, and we want to go down to the properties of our starter player. Where it says name display distance, we want to go and change name display distance to zero. Now basically what this is meaning is, if anyone remembers, there's a slight little bit of a text above a player's head when they first join into the game. We are basically now disabling that, so the distance on that is 100. But we are now changing that to zero basically so that we never ever see that small little text above a player's head. 
So now that you've gone and done that, click on play up here to go and test out the game. As you guys can see, we are now in the base plate. And as you guys can see, my username is slightly chopped off due to my, my username being quite long. Now what you can do to fix this is you can go over to your text settings and then go and change the text or disable text scaled and go and put in a specific number and change it until you've kind of got your username right. But um, that's just one of those things. You can go and size up your text label slightly so that this issue doesn't happen. But it's such a very minor issue. As you guys can see, when we're really zoomed in, you're able to see that it there is no issues there. But when you're a little bit further zoomed out, then it isn't as clear. But I mean, it still gives you a clear idea on what that player's username is. But as you guys can see, after the 25 distance, we are no longer able to see the player. So let's say the player's over here. They're not able to see my username until they are right here then they'll be able to see my username. Now keep in mind, every single person that joins into the game is going to be receiving one of these. So let's say, let's go and test it out here. If we had to go and click on our test over here and we go and start a server with two players, you're able to see my player, username will be player one and player two. As you guys can see, we're now here in the test base play and here is the two players. And as you guys can see, we've got player one and then we've also got player two. Now, the, as you guys can see, the distance I have to be for there, or I have to be this distance away to be able to see that player one or the other player's character. And as you guys can see there again, the text isn't actually fitting inside of the text label. So realistically, disable the text scale and change the text or the font, or should I say the, the text size to something that would fit the GUI there nicely. Now, if you guys remember, we also disabled so that we don't see the little, small little text above the player's character when they join into the game that says their username. So as you guys can see, even over here, the player over here no longer has that small little text there. It only has the big text up there, which is displaying their Roblox username. So there you have it. That is system one. We are now moving on to system two, where it is specific tags, but no one else in the server receives any sort of username tag. And it's really just down to those specific people, such as an admin, a developer, an owner, a VIP, whatever. And it's just down to those specific usernames. So we want to head over to our server script service, double click on our server script service script so that it opens up the script. We then want to head down to the description of this video, copy and paste the code that is in the description, bring it back to Roblox Studio, remove all the previous code, and then paste in the new code. So now that you've inserted the code, I'm going to quickly go over the things that you actually need to go and change, and then I'll go over the entire script. So here on line one, it goes local player info, and basically this is where you are identifying all the player's information. So you have the username there. So for example, we're going to change this username one to ITZ underscore floppy fish. So this will be our first special player. Then let's say we had another special player. Let's say our special player that we wanted to receive a special role, for example, a YouTuber role would be, um, let's write Creekcraft there, for example. There you go, Creekcraft would now receive another special role, so on, so on. Then now we obviously go and change whatever our role is going to be. So our tag equals whatever our, this text is going to be right here. The green, the green is classed as text. So we're going to change this right here. So tag equals and whatever that player's role is going to be. So ITZ underscore floppy fish is going to be the role of an owner. Now you can go out, add emojis, punctuation, whatever. You can go and customize your tags or your um, little roles here to however you would like. Then we identify our color, and this is basically a specific color for that special player. So the developer may want a, uh, maybe a golden color. So we can maybe try find a golden color here. There we go, that looks a little bit golden. And now you're able to see that ITZ is going to receive the owner tag with the owner tag being a golden color. Then now with, for example, let's say we had Creekcraft here that is going to receive a special role. It'll then be receiving the YouTuber role. So we can go put YouTuber there because that is going to be what is showing above their head. We are not showing their Roblox username. That is because it is going to be a special tag saying um, owner so-and-so. So it's not showing their Roblox username. So that YouTuber. And then we can go and change the color to a red, which would identify or I guess you could say represent YouTube. So now Creekcraft is going to receive the YouTuber role with the red color above their Roblox username. And then if you had a third person, you can go and put that here. But if you don't have a third person or 
or, or, or if you're just wanting only you to receive the special bowl, then you'd go and delete the other two here, and then you just have the single one. But depending on how many people you want to receive the special roll, will depend how many times you do this. Now, let's say you had maybe four people that you are wanting to have special rolls, four individual people, you, and you and you can see we've only got three here. Now, let's say we wanted four. All you do, you copy this, so copy any one of these, so we'll just copy username 3, go here, click enter after there on line 6, and go control V to paste in the next one. Then just go and change the usernames, obviously, the role name, the color, wada wada wada. And there you have it, now you've got another fourth person. Now basically this identifies exactly what we said before, I'm going to quickly go over the code here. It goes local billboard GUI equals game.serverStorage wait for child which is our billboard ui as mentioned the child is the billboard ui inside of the server storage it then goes local player info which we just went over that identifies the player's information then it goes game.players player added and then identifies our player which creates a function player then it goes to our player character added finds our character inside of the player then it goes local player name equals player name dot name as you guys remember, that's exactly what we used in system one. We used player.name, which basically got the player, the player's name from the function that was created here when the player was added. So local player name equals player.name, local player data equals player info, and then our player name right there. Then it goes if player data, then so if the player's data is there, then it goes, or if the player's username is up there and they're in the server. Then it goes local clone GUI and it identifies what our clone GUI is, which is billboard, and then it clones clo clo it clones our GUI like it did just before. Then it goes clone GUI dot text label dot text equals player data dot tag. So we're going back to our player data, and now we are selecting the tag that is from the data. So the text label and the text of the text label is now going to be owner. Let's say if ITZ would, IT, uh, floppy fish was in the server, then the tag would be owner. Now let's say Creecraft was in the server, then the tag would be YouTuber, depending on the player's username and what they are allocated to here in the player information. If they're not here in the player info, then they're going to receive no tag. Then it basically changes the color here then, then it goes to the player data and then it goes to the color. So there's our color, so then if ITZ was in the game, then the tag color would be like a golden color. And then it goes to the clone parent or the clone GUI dot parent, changes the parent of our GUI to game dot workspace, wait for child player name, and then it sets it to the player's head so that it is above the player. So now if we go click on the X button here next to our script and we go click on play or team test or sorry, um, the test up here that we've got two players, you'll be able to see that when we join in, we are given a special role or a special tag that is above our head. And as you guys can see, we're now in the base plate and wherever I go and whenever I, wherever, the, the moment I joined in, I was given this owner tag right here, simply because my username is itz underscore floppy fish. So then it gives me the owner tag. But let's say my username was not itz underscore floppy fish. Let's say um, my user, the, the person that is actually going to be receiving the, uh, the special tag or the special GUI or overhead GUI is ITS underscore floppy fish. Then you'll be able to see when I join in simply because my username is not ITS, it's ITZ, I do not receive any GUI above my head. Only the specific per people with the username that, it, that the, with the usernames that are in the script. And as you guys can see, because my username is not ITS, it is ITZ, I did not receive that special role. Now keep in mind, this is a server event, basically meaning that anyone in the server who joins into the game will see your tag. So if you're an owner inside of the game with the own, special owner tag, then anyone else in the game is going to be able to see, oh look, that person's got the owner tag. So it is going to be shown and it is not a local thing where it is just a client-sided script, I guess you could say, where it is not just hidden for you. So only you see that you've got the tag. Everyone in the server sees that you have got the tag. So that is system two done and dusted. We are now moving on to the third and final system, system three. Now this is basically pretty much the same to system two. The only thing that is different is we are now making an else. So if else, if the player does not, or if the username is not allocated in the script, then they receive another special um, GUI, which is just gonna be their Roblox username. So you, we have the specific GUI or the specific users that receive their uh, tags, but then if they are not 
with that or they're not allocated a specific tag then they're given a small basic tag or a bit more basic tag that is just white with a with representing or displaying their roblox username so we want to go down to the description of this video copy and paste the code that is in the description bring it back to roblox studio this is going to be called system 3 remove all the previous code and then paste in the new code so here as you guys can see it is pretty much the, the same as we used before it has now just got an else function here where so else then it happens there i'm going to go through the code here in a second but again i'm just going to go over the main parts that you can go and change first before we go over the entire bit of code here so then you go and change your local local player info again just like in system two so you're going to set your username so itz and it's got floppy fish just like that it does need to be precise regarding the capital letters whatever what just go and type your username in there best easiest way is just copy it from roblox's page and paste it back in here then you go and change your tag so we can put owner like that and then we can go and change our color to let's say a golden color just like we had before and now we're going to be called owner with an exclamation mark now depending obviously you go and do this as for, to any players that you want to uh, allow a special tag above their head you'd go and put their usernames there the role name there etc then it goes here on line nine game.players.player added it creates the function just like before which identifies the player and then player.character added identifies the character player um, local player name equals player the name so the player dot name that's the player's name local player data as we mentioned before player info player name then local clone GUI, which is basically identifying our billboard GUI being cloned again using the clone event. So it is cloning our GUI. Then if player data, then clone GUI dot text label dot text player dot data dot tag. So it is then putting making that uh, GUI text label text being our tag, which is owner. If we, so, if the player is up there and is identified up there, then they receive that special tag that it, that we mentioned there. The special tag being owner. Same thing with the color, then it uh, changes the text color to the orange right up there. Else, so if they do not, or if they are not mentioned up here in the player data, in, in the player information, then else, then they're going to be cloned, the clone GUI top text label dot text is going to be set to the player's, the player dot name, their Roblox username. Then it goes clone GUI dot text label dot text color and this basically sets the player's overhead GUI text color to white. So if you wanted to change it to pink, you go and change it to pink by clicking on the wheel here and then you can select whatever pink color you want. There we go, we got a nice pink or maybe a green, you got a blue, whatever you really want. I'm just gonna stick it to white though. So basically here, just an overview of the script again, the specific people will be given their specific roles. So you can have the owner, VIP, admin, whatever. But then if they are not on that specific list or the specific, or if they were not allocated a specific um, overhead uh, GUI tag, then they will be receiving an overhead tag that is just gonna be displaying their Roblox username. So we're gonna first gonna do the demonstration showing you that it does actually work regarding the special tag. So there we go, we've got the ITZ underscore floppy fish. So if we go click on X here up next to our script, click on play, you'll be able to see when we join in now, we'll be given that owner tag that we had just before, simply because our username has been allocated to a special tag. But now let's say we went and messed up the username or our username wasn't actually ITZ underscore floppy fish. Let's say it was the ITS underscore floppy fish again. And we go click on play up here. You'll be able to see that now when we join in, we don't actually spawn with our standard owner tag that we had before that we were allocated to. We now spawn in with a standard tag, which is just show or displaying our Roblox username. So we no longer have a specific tag, but we now have a standard basic Roblox username overhead GUI tag that is going to that is given a, given to us instead of that specific tag. So system three is great if you want to have a special tag above your Roblox's developer's head, and then you also want your specific players uh, or your other players to also receive an overhead tag if they are playing the game. Now something else that you can do, depending if you don't want the player's username to be displayed. Now let's say you wanted the player's names who were not allocated a special role to be something else and not actually their Roblox username. Let's say you wanted them to be called Fishers. You wanna head over here to line 20 and then you wanna go and delete player.name. And just after the space bar, you wanna, oh, sorry, just past the, um, just 
after the equals bar, you want to click space, and then you want to go and insert a punctuation mark. Now, in between the punctuation marks, you want to go and type whatever your text that the player's name is actually going to be. So, for example, ours will be fish. So now when we go and join into the game now, and our username is not allocated to a special role, our username above, our, or our overhead GUI, is going to be saying fish. It is no longer going to be saying our username. So we go X up here, click on join. And as you guys can see, we are now in the base plate, and simply because my name is not allocated to a, net, or allocated to a specific overhead GUI, then I'm given the fish text, which was before my Roblox username, but now it is fish. If you guys are a little bit lost or you do need a little bit of help, feel free to contact us on Discord and we can happily help you out. But anyway guys, I'm going to wrap up the video here. If you did enjoy, I'd appreciate it if you do consider subscribing to the channel, turning on the notification bell so you don't miss another upload. And if you guys did really enjoy, please do consider liking the video, I'd really appreciate it. But anyway, have an amazing rest of your day and I'll see everyone in the next Roblox Studio video.